5.2 J, Area, Volume, and Temperature, Composition of Solids. If we happen to not have a particular formula for a shape that we must do, we must add shapes together. Meaning we find two shapes or more than two shapes and we add those formulas together in order to determine the final volume. We will see this in example one. Example one shows an image that looks like an ice cream cone with the dome on top. We do not have a formula for this shape. We do, however, have formulas for both a cone and a sphere. Since this looks like the combined shape, we will be using these formulas. In blue, I have shown the outline of the cone. In red, we can see that we have half of a circle. We will be using these two to determine the final volume. First, let's find the volume of the hemisphere or the half of a sphere. So for the hemisphere, we know that it is one half, that is what the word hemi means. So we need half of a sphere. Since we know the formula for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, we are going to use half of the 4 thirds pi r cubed formula. This will allow us to find the hemisphere. For this formula, you can see that we need a radius. If we look at our sphere, let's erase our lines, we will see that there is a distance across labeled. This distance goes from one edge to one edge of both the sphere and the cone. It also shows it is four feet. This means that this is a diameter for both the sphere and the cone. Remember that with diameters, we must take the diameter and divide it by two so that we may find the radius. The radius of the cone and sphere is therefore four feet divided by two, which gives us a radius of two feet. We can now use this in our hemisphere formula. Therefore, our hemisphere's volume is one half times four thirds pi r being two feet cubed. We start on the innermost parenthesis and do the exponent value. Two feet cubed becomes eight feet cubed. We can multiply the one half and the four thirds to give us four sixths or a combined fraction. Next, we can reduce this fraction to give us two thirds because a two goes into both the numerator and the denominator. Next, we can multiply the eight times the two thirds to give us sixteen thirds pi. The units are still feet cubed. We will currently leave this as 16 thirds pi for the moment. Next, we need to find the volume of the cone. The cone's volume, remember, is that of one third pi r squared h, which means we need both an r value, which we have already discovered, and the height. As you can see, the height is shown for the entire shape, but we would only like the height from the center to the base. As you can see, this is not shown on the shape. We then have to use things we know about these shapes to determine 
how high this shape is. Since we know the radius was two feet, or if I drew from the center to the edge, it would be two feet, this would be the same everywhere on the circle, which means if I went vertically up, it would also be two feet. Coming out and marking this on the outer line would show that the inside of this hemisphere was two feet, and since the whole line is 10 feet, that would then make the other portion, or the portion in the cone, eight feet. In this way, we have now found the height of the cone. We can now use this to finish solving the formula. We now have that the volume is one-third pi times the radius, which remember was the same as that of the hemisphere, or two feet squared times the height, which is eight feet. We now find that two feet squared is four feet squared, we will multiply that by the eight feet, the pi, and the one-third. We now have 32, and we can place this over three and make it 32 thirds pi feet cubed. This is the volume of the cone. As you can tell, we have found two separate volumes, the volume of the hemisphere and the volume of the cone. We can add these two values together to get the total volume. This is why we have left the pies, because a pie can be treated as a variable, and therefore you can add numbers that both have that so-called variable. Therefore, the total volume of our shape is 16 thirds pi plus 32 thirds pi, which results in the 16 plus the 32, which will give us 48 thirds pi. We then need to put in the value for the pi, which we know to be 3.14. So we multiply 43 thirds by 3.14. This will give us the final volume of 50.24 feet. By not rounding until the end, we were able to get a more exact answer. Remember that when finding the volume of combined shapes, you must always start by identifying the shapes that you do know formulas for, and then finding the information needed to solve the problem.